Well, good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Ray Finger. I am the advanced planner and aftercare counselor for Warden Stevens Funeral Homes. Uh, the lady here to my left is Stephanie Neal. Uh, she is my assistant at Lord and Stevens in both pre-need and aftercare. And on behalf of Stephanie and I and our staff at Lord and Stevens Funeral Home, we would like to say thank you uh, for the opportunity to be here today at the Athens Clark County Library uh, for a November Lunch and Learn. Uh, it's been titled Ordering Your Affairs, Reflecting, Sharing, and Learning. And we thank you again for the opportunity to participate in this series. We always like to begin our meetings with a video that so well sets the stage for the information that we're going to share with you in just a few moments. So I'm going to ask my assistant, if she would, to come at this time and get us started with the video. And I'll come back after it plays. Think about everything you plan for. Dinners, dates, vacations, college, careers, weddings, children, retirement. You make plans to organize your life, to prepare as best you can, to make the most of these moments so that they can be truly meaningful. Experience teaches you that taking care of as many details as you can today will help ensure that you appreciate these moments when they finally arrive. With proper planning, even seemingly ordinary occasions have the power to become profound. Yet there's one thing most of us forget. Of all of these life's most meaningful moments, the one that rarely gets checked off the list, the one that most people neglect or deliberately choose to ignore, is the one that is perhaps the most significant, your funeral. We put it off, it's taboo, so we're left unprepared. Except so are our loved ones. At a time when healing and meaningful connection are needed most, family members and loved ones are left to pick up the pieces. They worry about what you wanted and become confused about how you wished to be remembered. Suddenly, choices come flying at them all at once, and they're forced to make hundreds of decisions, not least of which is how they'll pay for it. Surprisingly, a will covers none of this. It lays out a plan for your belongings, not for you and your loved ones, nor for how they'll begin to heal after you're gone. Which is exactly why pre-planning a funeral can help. Your loved ones will remember you forever. They will remember the countless moments from throughout your life, the joy, the challenges, the triumphs. They'll remember the sound of your laugh and the gleam of your smile. And they will want a chance to connect and to share these many memories together. Pre-planning a funeral will give you peace of mind. It is a smart investment economically and a wise choice for the well-being of your family. When you make an intentional plan for your loved ones to gather and begin to heal, it is more than just the details. It is a responsible and considerate gift that will continue to live on in their memories. As it comes to queue up our presentation, I want to call attention to uh, the sheet of paper on your table, this blue sheet of paper. And on the front here, it talks about what is called a final wishes organizer. I actually have the organizer uh, here in my hand. This is a physical copy of it. And this is the resource that I use when I meet with families to help them with their final wishes in order. If you flip over to the back of the sheet, there is a lined area where you can take notes. And yes, there will be a test today. Just joking with you. But if I say something today that you would like to write down uh, that's important to you, or maybe you have a question a little bit later, I will certainly take those questions before we leave here today. Now, what we're doing here today is what we call a community education program. Uh, one thing at Lord and Stevens I believe that uh, we're very proud of is we spend a lot of time in the community. So that means each month we're in the community uh, at senior centers, we're with veterans groups, we're at festivals. Uh, last Saturday we were at the Madison County Pioneer Festival in Comer, uh, the Oconee Fall Festival a few months back. Uh, this was actually the third presentation I've done this week. So we spent a lot of time in the community meeting our neighbors and uh, sharing information with them and answering their questions. And again, we count it an honor to be here today. Our session today is titled Peace of Mind for You and Your Loved Ones. And I can tell you for me, at the end of any day, uh, when I lay my head down at night, uh, there's nothing better than having peace of mind 
And that's certainly true at the end of life. And today we're going to show you how you can have that peace of mind for yourself today and for your loved ones as well. Now, when we have these meetings, we always like to have a little fun. Anyone in the room like to have a little fun? Anyone in the room here like trivia? Okay. Uh, I know you may sometimes play this at a restaurant or, you know, maybe in a, a gathering with some friends. And a lot of people have played a lot of different trivia, but I, I, I don't think many people have played funeral trivia. So we're going to play funeral trivia here with you for just a few moments. We want you to participate. I'm going to ask you some questions, but we want you to answer. The first question is, who holds the record for the world's most expensive funeral? Would that be John F. Kennedy? Would that be Alexander the Great? Kim Young the Second? Or Ronald Reagan? Think about that for a moment. Who would it be? I would have said Queen Elizabeth. Well, <laughs> that is a good answer. We've got one that far exceeds her. The answer is actually Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great's funeral was $600 million. He presided over the largest empire in the world. He passed away in 323 BC and was placed in a solid gold casket transported by a solid gold carriage pulled by a team of 60 horses. Now I can stand here and tell you today on behalf of Lord Stevens Funeral Home, we have never had a $600 million funeral. <laughs> Maybe that one's yours. The second question is, and this is kind of a run-on question, run-on sentence. What realistic 70s sitcom aired a bittersweet episode as the season finale for 1974-75 season in which one of the best-loved members of the ensemble cast died in a plane crash and was hence buried at sea? Would that be All in the Family, Happy Days, M.A.S.H., or Cheers? The answer is MASH. The answer is MASH. Lieutenant Colonel Blake was loved by the audience, but he did not want to play second or third fiddle to Hawkeye or Trapper John. So the, the producers reluctantly accepted his resignation and made an irreversible exit. Does anyone remember that episode? Okay. The third question. What celebrity saw their funeral tickets? Now think about this. So many people wanted to attend your funeral. We had to print tickets. And not only did we print tickets, they were scalped. So the tickets were scalped for more than $10,000. Would that be Elvis Presley, Prince, John Lennon, or Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. I hear Michael Jackson. I hear Michael Jackson. Okay. The answer is Michael Jackson. His memorial service was held at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California, and there were over 17,000 people in attendance, over 3 billion viewed online, and there were performers that day such as Mariah Carey and Stevie Wonder. Now, the last question here, we rarely have anyone that can answer this. And even when they can answer it, they can't tell us why they got the answer right. So I've set this one up for you. <laughs> But this question asks, for a veteran service, how many stars should be visible on a properly folded flag? Should it be 12, 8, 6, or 4? represents the four branches of service. Of course, now there's actually five. There's a space force, but I don't think they're going to add another star to the flag. So the answer's four. You guys did a great job. Uh, give yourself a round of applause. Great job. So I'm going to begin now to tell you a little bit about Lord and Stevens Funeral Homes. At Lord and Stevens Funeral Homes, we are locally owned. Uh, we are not part of a corporation. We're just local people serving local families. 
Our owner, his name is Tom Lord. And what we appreciate about Tom is that Tom is on site every day. He's at the funeral home. He's hands-on. He's very approachable. And Tom, he sets the example for our entire organization and our staff. And when I mention that, I'm speaking of the example of how to serve and care for a family. And the reason I mention that is because I talk with people every day about funeral homes in general. And what I find is that when most people think about a funeral home, they really only focus in on the time of a loss. And hear me loud and clear, that is a very important time. And at that time, we will serve your family with excellence. But it really does help when we're able to establish a relationship with you ahead of that day, such as even today. And the reason I say that is because, believe it or not, there are ways that we can serve you and your family up until the time of need, and then even past the time of need. And the reason I mention past the time of need is because we know that when a family loses a loved one, that family will have need for what we call aftercare. And we have resources and tools in place that help the family walk through grieving, healing, and closure. As a matter of fact, we have an aftercare program that sets us apart from any other funeral home, and it is intentionally titled everything after because it literally provides a family everything they need after a loss such as the resources for shutting down accounts estate questions and comprehensive grief support and these resources are provided to the family immediately in a digital format in email and text so that you can take them and utilize them at the times and the places that are most convenient to you now, some people might say, well, digital is not my thing. And, of course, we have the uh, printed information for you as well. But I say that to say this. Our serving your family at Lord & Stevens does not end at the time of your loss, but it continues through everything after. This next screen uh, we're very proud of. And the reason for that is we began uh, the Everything After Aftercare program July 3rd, 2021. So from July 3rd, 2021 to today, we have enrolled 514 families in this program. And 54 of those families have gone to Google and gave us a review of 5.0. So this is an incredible resource for a family after the loss of a loved one. We have three funeral home locations. Our main location is located in East Athens on the Lexington Road. We call that Lord and Stevens East. Our second location is located in Oc Oconee County on, on Jimmy Daniel right off of Highway 316. We call that Lord and Stevens West. And our third location is north of here up in Danielsville, Georgia. We have two cemeteries. Our first cemetery is in East Athens. It's called Athens Memory Gardens. And our second cemetery is in Oconee County. Uh, there on the Hog Mountain Road, Highway 53, it sits in behind the Dairy Queen, and it is called Oconee Memorial Park. Out in front of Oconee Memorial Park is another funeral home, which is called Oconee Chapel. We own that funeral home, but we do not open that funeral home each day, staff it, cut the lights on, but it's prepared, it's ready to go when a family requests it. We are the only funeral home in the Athens area that has a crematory on site. So when I meet with the family and find the preference is cremation, I usually find that it gives the family peace of mind, uh, knowing that we do not have to ship their loved one off, we don't contract them out, their loved one never leaves our care, and we do not provide cremation services for other funeral homes or organizations, only for the families that we serve. And we're two years and five months into the pet cremation business, we have a business inside of Lord and Stevens now called Athens Pet Cremation. And I stand here today and tell you that this business has exceeded every expectation that we have. Uh, people love their pets. Uh, we're currently, as of October uh, and September and October, serving 130 to 140 families a month. So, you know, I tell people now we can serve your whole family, even your four-legged family members. So we have two human crematory and a separate pet crematory. So that's a little bit more 
about us at Lord and Stephen's Funeral Homes. On a personal note, I'm a native Athenian, was born in Athens. Uh, I buried my dad, my mother, my brother, my mother-in-law at Lord and Stephen's Funeral Homes. And then I spent many years in full-time ministry in the Athens area. I buried people in all of the local funeral homes. But now I work for Lord and Stephen's. And I just say that to say this, I count it an honor to be part of the Lord and Stevens organization simply because of the way that we serve families. I know that we serve families with excellence. And when I say that, we're not perfect, but we do strive to do the very best every opportunity that we have to serve a family. So by show of hands, have we ever served any of your family members? Well, I'm sorry for your loss. And I trust at that time that our services, staff, facilities was all in good order for you and your family. Sorry for your loss. So the reason that we do community education programs and events such as this is because what we find is when people have questions, uh, whether their questions are specifically about our funeral home or funeral service, you know, burial, cremation, pet cremation, if it's about green burial, if it's about our cemeteries, whatever the questions may be, uh, usually people are not comfortable showing up at the funeral home and walking through the door and asking, answer, asking them questions. Neither many times are they comfortable calling on the phone and asking those questions. So we know if we can come out into the community to a setting such as this, again, we can share some very valuable information with you and answer your questions. So what I'm going to do from here forward is I'm going to give you uh, what I might call a bird's eye view or a very high level view of what is technically called advanced funeral planning. But personally, I like to speak in, in layman's terms. So actually advanced funeral planning, what I'll be speaking about is pre-planning or making pre-arrangements. Now, what I will not do here today is get into specifics such as cost. And I think the reason for that's obvious because everyone's preference is different and their choices are different. But I have brought some resources with my information on it, uh, contact information where if you have questions after this or if you would like for me to sit down with you with the Final Wishes organizer and walk you through that, I'll be more than happy to do that. So I want to go forward here by asking you this question. Why would someone pre-plan their final wishes, or as it asks on the screen, what's the most important reason that you would like to get some things in order ahead of time? Why would someone do that? Making it easier on the uh, people, our family. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Family and friends. Mm -hmm. Any others? Well, when I ask that question, uh, the number one answer I get is right in line with what you've said. Hey, I want to take the burden off the shoulders of my surviving loved ones. Many times I have someone also that says, hey, I want to take control. <laughs> and, and when they say that, uh, you know, they mean that with a very positive spin on control. They mean I want my arrangements written down and carried out the way I would like. So when you pre-plan your final wishes, uh, you're able to take control of the three essential parts of your final wishes, which is your preference, uh, the many choices and options available to you, their cost and then how they will be funded, which means how they will be paid for. This next screen uh, is pretty interesting and uh, if you're here in the room and you've lost a loved one uh, and you've been involved in arrangements, then you will know that what I'm about to tell you is spot on. Uh, sometimes people who have never been in that situation are like, I, I don't know. But when you lose a loved one, from that moment forward over the next 36 hours, you're going to make between 75 and 125 very important decisions. Now, it begins with the time of loss and which funeral home they're going to call. And then from there forward, people are calling, asking questions. It's just a lot of questions to answer in a short period of time at a highly emotional time. So again, we know that when you're able to take care of the majority of that ahead of time, you're able to take the burden and the load off the shoulders of your family. Now, when I meet with someone or a family to help them put their arrangements in order, of course, we're using this resource, the Final Wishes Organizer, but even before we open it, what I want to do is just have a conversation with you because I want to get to know you. And the reason for that is I want to serve you well, Lord, and Stevens wants to serve you well. 
So I like to, to know, you know, if you're from Athens uh, or how did you get to Athens? Uh, tell me about your family. Are you married? Do you have children? Uh, do you have grandchildren? Uh, if you do, you can show me their pictures because I'll probably show you mine. Uh, do you have hobbies? Uh, are you involved in any local clubs, groups, organizations? Really just get to know each other. Again, the purpose for that is we want to serve you well. And then we open the organizer and we turn our attention to a document called a memorial guide. And what a memorial guide does, it actually allows me to gather every bit of information today that will be needed on that day way in the future, such as your vital statistics. And that information is the information that must go on your death certificate. So I'm actually able to gather all of that information today minus your date of death. We don't want to know that. Second, uh, your family contact information. And again, way in the future at the time of need, who will we sit down at the, with at the funeral home? We want to record that information with their contact information. Next, are you a military veteran? If you are we're going to record that information, I'm going to request a copy of your DD-214, Honorable Discharge Paperwork. Then we will talk about which of our funeral home locations would best serve your family. We will talk about, do you have a religious preference you want me to record? Do you own cemetery property? And then when we get to the bottom of the memorial guide, there's three little lines there, and that's when I'm going to ask you the biggie question. And the biggie question in the funeral industry is this, is your preference for your final wishes, is it burial? Or is it cremation? And if you said my preference is burial, then my next question to you would be where will your funeral service take place? Will it take place at your church or in one of our chapels or at another location? The next thing would be when will the visitation take place? The opportunity for people to come out and pay their respects to your surviving loved ones. Would it be in their best interest to have that in the evening and have the funeral service the next day or would it be in their best interest to combine the funeral service and the visitation on the same day? We will talk about your cemetery information, record that again, and then we will select merchandise, which in the preference of a funeral is a casket and a ball. So we will cover all of that information along with selecting all of the merchandise. If you said, I'll take that. If you said the, uh, my preference is cremation, I, I want you to know that there are three levels of cremation services that we provide. The first level of cremation services is called direct cremation, or some people refer to it as simple cremation, which means we leave the funeral home, we go pick up a body, we bring the body back to the funeral home, we cremate the body, and we hand those remains right back to the family. That is direct cremation. The second level of cremation services is called cremation that's followed by a memorial service. So we go pick up a body, we bring it back to the funeral home, we cremate the body, and then there would be a memorial service, which always means there's no body present. There would be a visitation for people to come and pay their respects to your surviving loved ones, but the body's already cremated. And then after the services, whatever your family would like for us to do with the remains, whether that's bury them in the cemetery, hand them back to the family, scatter them, whatever their wish would be. The third level of cremation services provided is called full service cremation, or some people refer to it as traditional cremation. And that's where we go pick up a body, bring it back to the funeral home, we embalm the body, set the features, close the eyes, the mouth, cosmetics, dressing, there's casketing, and the body's placed into a beautiful cherry rental casket. There's a visitation with the body present, there's a funeral service with the body present, but after the funeral service, we cremate the body. And then again, we take the remains and carry out the wishes of the family. So for cremation, three levels of service, direct cremation, cremation that's followed by a memorial service, and full service cremation. And then, of course, there is the selection of merchandise for cremation, which is simply an urn. Now, I want you to know that personalization has become a huge part of the funeral industry. And when I mention that, uh, I would imagine most people in the room have been to a funeral home. 
Uh, you've been to a visitation. You've seen a table laid out there with photographs, picture frames, memorabilia. Maybe there's a video slideshow playing. That is all personalization. And we have seen some people do some rather neat and unique things at a few of our funeral homes. And I'm going to share a couple of those with you. Uh, a few years back at our location in Oconee County on Jimmy Daniel, there was a family who during their visitation had moon pie and RC cola. And the reason for that was because that family, anytime they gathered, uh, it was a tradition that they had moon pie and RC cola at the gathering. So they brought their tradition into uh, the visitation. We thought that was really neat. We had a gentleman at the same location uh, who was a very decorated military uh, man and uh, he had passed and was cremated and there was a memorial service there. But this gentleman loved Chick-fil-A milkshakes. So on the day of his service, uh, when everyone left the chapel, there was a table filled with Chick-fil-A milkshakes where everyone could have one as they left. That was his preference there. And it was wonderful on that hot July afternoon. This third example of personalization happened up in Madison County at our funeral home in Danielsville. A gentleman a few years back when he was planning his final wishes, of course part of that is gathering on the death certificate information, your occupation, and he was a long haul truck driver. And he let us know that when he passed, he did not want his casket placed inside of our purse, but he wanted his casket on the pad on the back of his truck. So on the day when he passed, we were able to fabricate a rack, place that casket there, and bring him from the funeral home in Danielsville uh, to the cemetery in Athens. And there were people stopping on the side of the road and taking pictures of this, but we were able to carry that out, and that's personalization. This last uh, example of personalization took place a few years back north of here, up in the state of Ohio. Uh, there was a gentleman who was an avid Cleveland Browns football fan. And back in the day, they, they had never had a winning season. And when he was uh, putting his arrangements together, he wanted to go ahead and, and start his obituary. And a lot of people do that. And we put it in the file. We know it has to be proofread at the time of need. But uh, this gentleman had requested of the Cleveland Browns football organization that they would provide him six of their staff to be pallbearers so that they can let him down one more time. <laughs> and they have won. So again, thinking about personalization and your arrangements, uh, it can be as traditional as you would like, or it can be as creative as you would like, and we can help you plan it today, and we can make sure that it happens at that time. Now, in Morton Stevens, uh, we have a Veterans Memorial Program, and let me tell you what this means. This means that we make sure that all of the residents in Clark and surrounding counties, those who are veterans, that they receive the information that is rightly theirs. Uh, I talk with people all the time that are veterans, and here's what I hear, is that uh, the VA has all of these benefits, but they do not do a good job of communicating to the veterans what's available to them. So we take that upon ourselves to make sure that veterans and spouses know about the Veterans Administration burial benefits. Let me just pause and say right here, we feel at Morton Stevens that our veterans are the champions. And when I say that, uh, you know, I'm speaking of the men and women that have served our country in the past and those who are serving today, they're the champions. It's not the professional athletes or the movie stars, it's the people that lay their life on the line for our freedom here. So in this program, again, the first thing we do is I meet with veterans, I met with a group yesterday, and I make sure that they understand the veterans' burial benefits that are available to them. Another thing that we do is that we take bus trips up to the Georgia National Veterans Cemetery in Canton, Georgia. Now, we're blessed in Georgia to have a national veterans cemetery and a state, the state's in Milledgeville, and the one in Canton, the national veterans cemetery, is 700 plus acres. It's the second largest in the U.S., only behind Arlington. It is gloriously beautiful. And pre-COVID, I think everyone uses that term now, pre-COVID we would rent a bus, we would take 50 to 60 veterans and spouse up to that cemetery where they could see the grounds, where they could have their questions answered, share information with them. And then we would take them over to Williamson Brothers Barbecue in Canton for lunch. That was the best part of the trip. 
and then we would have them back at our funeral home in Oconee County, 3, 3.30 in the afternoon, and that absolutely no cost to them. Again, just a tangible way to say thank you for serving our country. We also, with our Veterans Memorial Program, have a flag retirement program. So if someone has a torn or tattered U.S. flag, they can drop that flag off at any of our funeral home locations, and we will put that flag down honorably. And what I mean by that is when we have a veteran who is cremated, we will drape that flag over that veteran and put that flag down honorably and honor that veteran one more time. One more thing that we have in place for our veterans with this program is an in-house veterans package, benefit package, for veterans and spouses who pre-plan and who prepay for their final wishes. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment, but they get a discount on their services, uh, they get free personalization of a casket or urn, uh, they get the free oak or cherry pipe case, and if the veteran does not own cemetery property and would like to be buried in our cemetery at his memory gardens, we give the veteran a grave space there. So that is a very significant package. But again, it's just a tangible way that we can say to a veteran and spouse, thank you for serving our country. Now, when I meet with you to carry out your final wishes, I will always recommend to you what is called out of area protection. And here's what this means. This means, God forbid, if you're ever out there traveling and you're more than 75 miles away from your home and you pass away, out of area protection will step up and pay every dime of the cost at the funeral home location where your body would be picked up and processed before it's returned here. You know, it doesn't matter if you're on a day trip, a vacation, a cruise, or if you're in Egypt. It doesn't matter. This steps in. And, and most people are not aware that if you die traveling, that a funeral home in the town where you die is going to pick your body up and process it. Right here in Athens each day, uh, when I say this, a lot of people are like, really? And then they think about it and say, that, that would be right. But right here in Athens every day, there's people that come into Athens from all over the world, and unexpectedly they die. And guess who picks them up? We pick them up, and we either embalm or cremate their body and ship the remains back where they came from. That process is very costly and must be paid for on the day that the services are rendered. So if someone has out of air protection, what that is, that is a membership with an organization you see there on the screen, MASA, Medical Air Services Association, out of air protection. If you have that membership, and this is the one thing I'm going to give you the cost on today, the MASA membership is $400. $99. One-time cost, no annual fee, no deductible, covers you the remainder of your life traveling anywhere in the world. If you have that and die anywhere in the world, what MASA does, they take care of all the logistics and all of the cost at that funeral home location, even if you're having your body shipped back here. No more cost. The $4.99 covers it all. So we recommend this to anyone who is active. You know, one of the best ways to uh, think about the $4.99 cost is this. If you died today, only across the Georgia state line, in a state that touches Georgia that close, I can tell you with certainty that it's going to cost your family way more than $4.99 for your body to be picked up, processed, and returned here. So again, we recommend this to anyone who is active. Now, at Lord & Stevens, uh, we have been in business 33 years. And uh, Tom Lord opened that location on the Lexington Road in February of 1989. And, and I have not been at Lord & Stevens 30 plus years, uh, but I can tell you that we have served hundreds of families in Athens and surrounding counties over those years. But I can honestly tell you that we never had one family or one person that was upset or disappointed because their deceased loved one had already pre-planned and prepaid for their final wishes. Now, there is a lot of people upset when it doesn't happen in that order, but there's certainly no one when it does. When you pre-plan, you're able to take control of your final wishes because you're able to take control of the many choices and options available to you. When you prepay, you're able to take control of the cost. You're actually able to lock it in at today's price and avoid the unnecessary overspending. So let me ask you this, has anyone in the room ever made an impulsive purchase? <laughs> Haven't we all? 
Well, sad to say, when a family loses a loved one, they come to the funeral home with no planning and no pain has taken place. That is exactly what happens. And what you can do by pre-planning is that you can remove that impulse from your family. So in finishing out this presentation, I'm going to take a few moments and share with you the process along with the substantial benefits and savings that comes with paying for final wishes in advance. When someone pays for their final wishes in advance, the money that they are paying, it is legally called pre-need funds. By law, funeral homes, we cannot take and hold those funds. And that's because all funeral homes, the entire funeral industry, it is regulated by the Federal Trade Commission and the state laws. And they say to all funeral homes, you cannot take money, receive money, you can't hold money for funeral services that you have not yet provided. So all pre-need money is placed into a pre-need insurance policy. And that policy can only be used to pay off your final wishes. And our owner, Tom Lord, chooses to use Physicians Mutual Life Insurance Company. So what that means to you and your family, first and foremost, is that it guarantees the safety and security of your money because the money's being held with a secure third party. The funeral home cannot hold one dime. But the pre-need policy provides you six unique benefits that otherwise would not be available to you. The first one's this. Because the money's placed into pre-need insurance, if you pass away while you're making payments on your final wishes, the insurance steps up to the plate and pays the balance off in full. That's immediate coverage. I've had it happen, sad to say. I've had people make one payment, three, six, pass away, completely paid off. The second benefit is that it locks the cost in at today's price and beats having to pay the future inflationary costs. Hey, we find ourselves today uh, in the highest inflation that we've seen in our country in decades. And you know, we're all are talking about the cost of food and gas. And if we can lock those costs in as high as they are, it would certainly help, but you can't. But there's one industry where you can lock in today's price and avoid the future inflationary cost, and that's in the funeral industry. The third benefit is that the policy is transferable. And what this means is the policy arrives in your home in seven to 10 days because it's yours. You own it, you hold it, you control it. If you ever move away from here, you relocate, it's portable, it goes with you. You can reassign the policy to any funeral home at any time for any reason. The fourth benefit is absolutely huge for you and I as seniors. The pre-need policy is exempt from Medicaid spend down unlike any other insurance. And here's what I mean by this. I don't know how familiar you are with this process. I don't know if you've ever had a family member or a friend that had to go into a nursing home. The truth is, no one in this room today votes to go in a nursing home. The truth is, no one that's in a nursing home voted to go in. You know, we just don't know if due to an accident, an injury, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, old age, if someone goes in a nursing home in the Athens area today, they average six to $7,000 a month. So if you go in there and you could not pay that, you would go right on to Medicaid. You would enter right into Medicaid, spend down. Granted, there are people out there that can pay that, six or $7,000 a month. It's called private pay. They pay it continually until they run out of their money and then they also go on to Medicaid. But when you go on Medicaid, you enter into their process called Medicaid spend down, which literally means you have to disclose and surrender all of your assets. So that's your house, that's your land, that's your car, that's your bank account, and it includes any life insurance policies if the policies have cash inside of them, which today would be called whole life or universal life insurance. Those policies are not exempt from Medicaid spend down, and I find that most people that hold those policies have not realized that. But, but when you think about it, the policy's got your name on it, you own it, and inside of that policy it has what is called cash value. And at that time, the cash value is counted in that list of assets I described against you. So sadly, people take those policies out 
and they pay on them their whole life because their intention was to have that in the end. But if you have the unfortunate circumstance of going in a nursing home and going on to Medicaid, you lose those policies in that process. You have to surrender them, which is horrible news. But the good news is the pre-need policy is exempt. Medicaid cannot touch it because it's structured in the way that's required by law to keep it exempt from Medicaid spend down. So the one thing Medicaid cannot take is the funeral arrangements that you pay for in advance. The fifth benefit is that if you have existing life insurance, you take care of your final wishes with the secure pre-need, you keep that in place for whomever or whatever that would need to be used for, such as continuing income for a family member, paying off any debt. But know this, in this day and age, a lot of people come back to the funeral home after losing a loved one and they tell us that they wound up having to take a large portion of their life insurance benefit having to pay off astronomical major medical costs. Because think about it, if the person that passed had a long-term trending illness before they pass, all of those doctor and hospital bills are still coming to the estate. The sixth benefit, last but not least, is that you do not have to pay for your final wishes all at once. So if someone gets all of this information, you know, they walk away, they do nothing with it, their family will show up at a funeral home in the future at the time of need, and they'll pay what the cost is on that day. But when you pre-plan and pre-pay, you're given six different payment options. So there's manageable payments. So again, the purpose of our meeting here today was to give you that bird's eye or very high level view of what pre-planning, pre-arrangements look like along with some of the choices and options. And, and I know uh, in such a short period of time as this, this is a lot of information to try to process. So again, it doesn't cost you anything for me to sit down with you with the Final Wishes Organizer, walk you through here, gather your information, fill out for you a cost estimate, and then after the cost estimate, I'm able to show you how today's cost will go up over the next 20 years, and then last but not least, I'm able to show you how you can lock in your cost with the manageable uh, payment options. So, on behalf of Lord and Stevens Funeral Homes, just want to say thank you. Uh, for the opportunity to be here at the athens Clark County Library for the Lunch and Learn and share this information with you and know that we would count it an honor to have the opportunity to serve you and your family. Thank you. So we're going to take questions at this time. Any questions that you may have?